Right. Welcome, everyone, to the Real Who Beans cast. I am your host, Matrix Lord 212, and I'm with Connor Farley. What's up, Connor? Hello. All right. So, one, I didn't get to hear your reaction to the episode. Yes. So, what was your reaction? I liked it, actually. A lot yeah. better than Saranga Conundrum. Yeah. Um, no, it was it was a good episode. Um, I thought it was one of the best. You didn't think it was one of the best, or you, you were like okay with it? Yeah, I thought it was one of the best. Um, mm, I don't. I the thing is, is that I just feel like while every episode is good, apart from Saranga Sur- Conundrum, every episode's brilliant. Even on rewatch, I'm bored by it. See, that's exactly what I've been saying. You can't rewatch them. Because there's no threat in any of them. This is what I'm saying. The monsters are really bad in some in some of them. In this one they weren't so bad, but still the threat of the threat was non existent. You know, you just you need that villain in there to keep things going and yeah. It's not been it's not been a thing this this series. So that's why it's forgettable. Yeah. Because there's nothing that and I thought that the BBC had recently said something about they said how the fans reacted to Doc Do and they said giving showing something of like the villains old and new. Where's the old villains that they're talking about? Because I didn't yeah. see any yet. Unless the Daleks are coming in. Which I'm I'm pr- I'm praying that they do appear in the finale because this is getting ridiculous. Well, I have some speculation about the uh, finale, actually, when we get to that. Um, okay. But, yeah, I liked it, but I just... The, I just it needs you know, the, like, we're rating these things, right? How it is, one yeah. to ten. But they're like almost like a different rating. Because even if we'll give it an eight or a nine or whatever, if you compare it to the other series, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I it really... Like like an eight in another series wouldn't necessarily be an eight in this series. Is that what you're saying? Like, in other words, uh, an eight of ten, it would be like a ten. Like, considered a ten, really. Oh, if you're, I, I, yeah, I know exactly what you know, You know what I'm talking about. I mean, and you can't compare them, though. That's the whole thing. It's like, like I was telling Philip, I said, if you take series one through ten, and you say, what is the worst of them? Not that they're bad. But what's the worst? I would say this. This would be at the bottom of all the series. You know what I'm to saying? To be honest, I, I would say that series one to ten is a completely different show. They call it series 11, though. It is not, unfortunately. It's connected. I mean, it's... It, it, this feels like a really... He never, he never rebranded it like series one or nothing. It, yeah, but that's exact. It feels like a reboot. But next year it won't be. Next yeah, year it'll be so up and close to the other series that it will be like ridiculous. Because well, they're gonna realize to. they're gonna realize he can't see. The, he can't do this again next season. He's got to on this. There's got to be some type of common sense in his brain that says, "Look, you know, I got away with it this season. People are not think- gonna." I think the way that I would describe it is that I'm loving Doctor Who at the moment for what it is. What I'm not loving is this series compared to the others. Right. You can't compare them because the other ones are far superior. Like like I said, it it feels like a different show all of a sudden. I know the thing is weird too. Tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Do you get that the the soundtrack doesn't fit with... Oh no! I I, I absolutely. In fact, I've never gone on YouTube, uh-huh. on on gone on BBC iPlayer, and gone back and listened to the soundtrack to an episode more than I have since uh, the first episode. Because um, Sega Nakanola is by far the best bit of this entire run. He he's absolutely. I love the soundtrack. Okay, it's but, absolutely fantastic. But you you feel it fits. With the episode? Yeah, yeah, I really do. But you like it better than Murray Gold? 
Yeah, way better than Murray Gold. God, really? it, it's not. It's not even close. Wow. Yeah, I was getting really bored of Murray Gold. And was more. There, there was wow. a point where I did like Murray Gold, but I mean, God, Se- Sega Nakamura was just kind of really kicked okay. him to the curb. To be fair, in terms of uh, he, he's really he's he's great. Like on, I think he yeah. is honestly the best thing that Chibnall's done. So we're almost done. I mean, we got. Four episodes left, and a special. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What is where you live? What is the consensus? Like, you have to have friends there that watch Doctor Who. I mean, in the UK, what is the, like you people you see on the street, people you know? Now, I'm not talking like in general. I'm talking about people you know. Like maybe your family watches it. I don't know. Like it. Do, it doesn't feel like Doctor Who. That's what I said, though. Yeah, I said that. that. That's the consensus, is that it's good, but it doesn't feel like the magic school bus. This is exactly what I'm saying. It, I like it for what it is. I do not like it compared I'm not to bashing Doctor it that it's, in its previous... I'm not bashing it that it's not... I mean, it's just it's trying to do something different. I get it, but... It's, it's, in, in fact, I would say this is the weirdest situation I've ever been in with Doctor uh-huh. It is great, but... It's not Doctor... It doesn't feel like Doctor Who. If you became... I wouldn't define it as Doctor Who. Okay. Let me, let me try to see how you answer this question because I want to see if you were on the same page. Say tomorrow you become in charge of every single merchandise that's about to come out for Series 11 to promote the show, especially when it goes on DVD and whatever. You get to design the T-shirts, you get to design the action figures, you get to design the thing. What the hell do you promote? Um, I personally would put out things like more books, I think. Okay. I, I, would, I would bring out action figures, but I, I think that the books are the things that you can get out faster. I know, but the thing is, books can get out faster than an action figure? I think so, yeah. Like just writing a whole entire friggin' book. Than designing one action well, no, because I, I, I'm not actually certain how BBC books works, but I right. think that they have loads of books already kind of planned and they're see, already written. See, here's the thing, right? There has to be a variety of merchandise. You know, people who like uh, calendars, people who like titans, people who like action figures, people who like the play sets, people who like the t shirts. And all I see is, oh, brilliant. And I, I, like eighty five percent of the clothing is for women. Like, there's nothing really that guys will wear. Period. Yeah. And I'm kind of questioning why would you do that? Because, and then I'm hearing this thing, which I wanted to do a topic wonders about that. <coughs> the BBC are not hiring men. They're hiring women for all these different things. What is that about? Like in in there. There has been a little bit of it. Yeah. What, what, that that has been the case just a little bit, I think. So but, they're allowed to just... I don't know. It's something to do with the dive. If we did that here, people would get, Strip like... Mate. People they, would oh, get good Lord. They, and arrested and, and, like, they're not allowed to do that here. Like, that, that's well, like we, saying, hey, um, BBC's not hiring whites. The, the it's BBC like, what the hell is happening? The BBC... Yeah, the BBC have something called the Diversity Charter, which I have to kind of like stick to. Oh, so basically it's a quota. Yeah. But, it's, but, it but how is the there a quota if there's no men, though? What does that mean? There, there's there no is men. men. Okay, there they is are men. hiring there's men. More, there's more emphasis on hiring women and minorities. So if you hire minorities, then the minorities are no longer minorities, they're the majority. But then the other people are the minority. It doesn't make any sense. Well, yeah, that's I. It's, I that yeah. doesn't make sense. Like you're making a new minority. Like they, they they think it looks good on paper, but it doesn't. All right. Can we talk about the two episodes? Uh, yeah, we can. Um... Before you say what it is, I wanted to say something. I looked at the titles and first glance, like. I thought there's no way that this is a title for Doctor Who. 
But then I thought about what Chibnall is doing lately, like her plan and the Sanundrum conundrum and, and the demons of Puja. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Chibnall. Yeah. The title of the last episode is so ridiculously long. And uh. stupid. <laughs> like, what in the F was he thinking? Like, hey, man, that was a great finale. What was it called? It was called the... Yeah. It's like, what the hell are you doing? Like, the other episode, it's like, hey, let's take a walk in the street. Like, that. that's like the name. It's like, what? All right, yeah. so let's... I, I'm sorry. I had to give my digs. Tell everybody the name of the ninth episode. Uh, the ninth episode is it, it takes you away on the edge of a Norwegian forge. Uh, okay, wait, stop, it, stop, stop. The episode is called It Takes You Away. Yeah. That's not even a title. But okay, go ahead. Um, on the edge of a Norwegian forge uh, in the present day, the Dr. Ryan Graham and Yard discover a boarded up cottage and a girl named Han in need of their help. What has happened here? What monster lurks in the woods around the cottage and beyond? It, I've got to say that that one actually sounds like one of the best. But the, the, title sounds, the, maybe. The, the title sucks, though. It sounds like a horror film. It it's takes like that, I know what he's trying. It follows or... It follows, yeah. Or, it takes what, you. It's trying to be like his buddies that work for Doctor Who that did like Sinister and stuff. Like... Some of them are Doctor Who people doing horror movies lately. Drag me to hell. I, I like it. I, I, th I think yeah. that episode might be... Yeah, I think it might All be right. one of them. All right, but the other one is bad, I think. Go ahead. My God. Could you say uh, it right or no? Yeah, I, I can't. Well, I'll say it wrong. You know that, right? Okay, go ahead. The Battle of Ranskur of Coloss. <laughs> Is this, is this a Star Trek Next Generation episode? Remember when Picard was trapped on that one planet and they referred to they referred to a battle and all that? Okay, <laughs> wait, wait. Say, um, say, say it again. Of, say, wait, say it again. So let me see if I can... Say it again. The, the Battle of Ranskua Av Kolos. The Battle of Ranskua Av Kolos. Like, I can't even say it. Forget All right. Right. Uh, on the planet of Ranskua Av Kolos lies the remains of a brutal battlefield, but as the Doctor, Graham, Yaz, and Ryan answer nine separate distress calls, they discover Wait, the planet of far more secret. Nine? How? Hold on. Well, this, is, this is where my theory comes in. Do you want to hear my theory? Yes. All nine distress calls at all nine monsters that we haven't seen defeated and we will not see defeated in the series. Defeated? What do you mean monsters? All monsters? Well, you, you know how it, it was particular. It was actually particularly uh, noted after like the first three episodes that none of the monsters are gone. That they, they all like teleported off, or they all just disappeared into. I mean, but, but, like <laughs> it's an. I think that all nine monsters, so I think Tim Shah, um, the, um, rem the remnants, Krasko from Rosa, uh, maybe the spiders. Um, Wait, the so, thing, hold on. This is something that if, if Doctor Who was watching their adventures as a TV show, like you realize how stupid that sounds that every single monster they face just so happened to be this is like I was saying, what, that they'll do like a five doctors thing without the other doctors. She'll be on a damn thing, and she'll be like chess pieces. They'll be moving her to fight all the things she fought before. This yeah, is what I that's said. Exactly. That's what I it is. Exactly what, I think that's exactly what they're going to do. I think all the monsters will come back. So everything from Tim Shah to episode nine. Oh, typical chips. I called that. God. All right, so um, that's not even that. Even, that's not even the writing. Because you've also I got to make it a for the doctor. Nine, nine is a terribly specific number as well. Nine. Do, yeah, do you I not know, think I, nine? I, nine I, is I, I, I names 
my book nine years time. Yeah, I have a thing with nines too. It, it, okay. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, without uh, it, just sounds too specific not to be that. Is what I'm trying to so say. So weird that he chose the number nine. Very interesting for episode nine. That, that, yeah, and and then there's nine episodes. Well, my ninth book was nine years time, but like there's a reason I have the nines. All right, but the, because the reason well, why I think that sounds like a condition for pills. There, uh, no. Joe, get to the nine. The reason, oh. the reason why I think it's nine distress calls is because he's the the nine distress calls are all monsters from the the series. Do we even have nine monsters? Yeah, we have Tim Shah. Um, the remnants, Kraska, uh, the spiders, the Pating, um, the Tajarians, whatever they're called, from this week. Um, they're not villains. We'll have, uh, we'll have Kablam's thing. Okay. Um, we'll have episode eight. Um, well, I can't remember the name of episode eight. Uh, the Witchfinders. Um, and Alan Cumming will probably come back as well. Because remember, he said he was going to come back? Yeah. Um, we'll have the one from that Norwegian it takes you away and then we'll have uh, the finale so I think it'll be so online. who's behind all of this though uh, there'll be there'll be this big bad I think yeah the, like Missy or something or, or well, we'll we'll Olivia Coleman or uh... oh yeah in, in fact it might be a surprise guest star might be Olivia Coleman yeah surprise there's an actual plot and what's the – okay, so – and the odds that the Daleks appear in the finale are what? Very slim. Really? Yeah, because uh, I, I don't think they'll have any more than the nine monsters. If that's if that prediction he's is – going to have to renegotiate that contract, that's for sure. But all right. Because you wouldn't want to, like, fill the episode with, like, 15 different kind of monsters. Just have Daleks in there as well. But I would if we had handkerchief monsters to hold the whole yeah. Like, yeah, I would. Because there's nothing here, like, to... Hey, man, you see Doctor Who? Yeah, what happened? Oh, handkerchief talked to her and said timeless child. It's like... Okay. You know. <laughs> they, 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 it's... You want to attract new viewers. How can you attract new viewers if a cloth is going to kill you? You know, like, that's the whole thing. It's like, you got to attract new people. You got to bring them in. Well, how do you bring them in? You bring them in with this the best. This not attract me to watching Doctor Who if this was my first season. Right. You bring them in with the best that, that people remember, like, on the show. Like, just, all right, so... In fact, there is an interesting thing about the finale, which we haven't actually seen before. Um, it's a final show? In the uh, trailer, okay. the first trailer that we got, and in fact the second one as well, there is an awful lot of the finale in it. You're, I'm blowing my nose, okay? I got a cold. Okay. So you're saying that the whole finale, most of the finale was in the trailer? If you look in the trailer, yeah, a lot of, like, you can see the planet, you can see... When he presses uh, the button and Graham dies, because that's how he dies. Yeah, that's the, that, where they've got the head um, implants. In the, you know them little uh, disc things in the head? That's the finale. Uh -huh. Mark Addy's character is in the finale. Who? Mark Addy. Played King Robert in Game of Thrones. He was in that very... Oh! He, 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 in the first episode, he was in that trailer at the end. Okay. Of, with all the guest stars. That right. was absolutely fucking pointless. Yeah, he was in there as well. Um, Are you excited about the finale? Uh, no, just, you took no, too long to answer. <laughs> <laughs> you took too long to answer. That means no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm You want to be. You want to be. But you, you, you want to be excited for it, but... Uh, well, uh, they've just got to show me that there's some threat first, because like she's just. I haven't seen any threat in any of the episodes. She's having too easy a time with it. Uh, hello, I've been saying that. Didn't I say throw the kitchen sink at her? It's too fucking easy for her. Didn't I say <laughs> throw? Didn't I say throw the kitchen sink at her? Yes. Didn't I say that they're not going to throw the kitchen sink? That they're going to make it so fucking easy that it's going to be ridiculous? Yeah. Because they don't want their new doctor to be challenged. It's dumbed down 
And oh, God, it's dumbed down. Thank you. Is he going to fix it? I hope so. Does he know what's wrong with it? Uh, he doesn't know. He has no clue. He doesn't want to know, I bet. I bet you he's ignoring everything. It is funny that we've gone from really complicated storylines that left loads of shit unanswered to... The simplistic, simplistic, simplistic shit. Mm-hmm. It is funny how we've we've sort of like done that. So it he's not crazy. smarter than Russell T. Davis or Moffat. I, I I definitely think that the consensus, not personally with me, but from people online that I've seen, is that he's not. He, he's like the third. He's a charlatan. If you were to rank them three, it would go maybe RTD Moffat, and it'd go in the order that they came. Right, that's the way I would say. RTD, yeah, like he, he's, the, he's the worst of the new who. Um, oh, show on it. Shit. He's supposed to be an improvement. He's supposed to be better. They said they took time picking a replacement. You don't pick a yeah. replacement if you're going to do less. He's got to get his shit together. Okay? He, you know what? I'm, I'm, I can't believe I'm going to say this. But if he can't fix this, He's right. got to be replaced. Well, no, no. They're not, he, he's, they, look, listen to me. Listen to me, Scott. They're definitely not going to the next season. It's beyond their shadow of a doubt. A million percent he's mm. doing the next season series, right? Okay, it's Connor. Yeah. If he doesn't fix this, and we're going to get a series 12 of the same easiness, and you have a choice... Do you fucking delay it a year so he can get his shit together and sacrifice a damn season? Or do you just let him pop out the same bullshit? I just let him pop out the same bullshit, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I wouldn't. Uh, if this is what he's going to do to a show, then I'll be nice. I'll give him half a season. Then I'd sack him. He's not going to bring anybody back, ever. I, I think... The BBC don't even care about the show anymore. Oh, my God. So, wait. If I didn't know any better, Connor, this would be like the same shit that happened when Doctor Who got canceled. But they kept changing the fucking time slot. They just fucking, after a while, it was like ridiculous. They didn't give, you know. So, they don't even give a fuck about the titles of the episode. They don't even give a fuck there's any villains. Did they, was he hired to end it? Yeah. So I'm starting to wonder. I, I honestly, I think that Doctor Who is past it. No, it isn't. It is. I, no. I think no. Is, uh, on TV these days, there is ten times better stuff. No fucking yeah. way, man. We can see that from way. No, up. no, I refuse to believe that because this guy fucks it up. No way. It has got fucking so much fucking potential. Just because this guy fucking didn't know how to do it. Get him out then. I'm telling you right now, this show could go fucking anywhere. Do you imagine if they started to have a pair of fucking balls and they started to bring people back and they didn't give a fuck about people's opinions like 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 other writers and shit and you start seeing the fucking weeping angels and you start getting a fucking description of that shit that ties into fucking Gallifrey and stuff and you start seeing shit like they reveal that maybe the fucking War Doctor was just an extra regeneration, and then where the other regeneration go, or you fucking Omega, or some shit. Like, if they really got into this stuff, and deep and dirty, and, you know, they started developing Medical Variant's character, why the fuck did you give up a whole life to go to join the church to fuck this guy up? Like, like just all this stuff, tie in David Tennant's tenure to fucking, like, just go in it. Just don't, just don't give a fuck. Just go in it. Fix this shit. Have mm-hmm. a fucking pair of balls. Have some fucking sacrifices. Have some shit. Maybe a fucking companion's angry at him. Maybe a companion turns on him. Maybe like some shit. Maybe Perry's fucking pissed that she got to be staying on a fucking what a you know that fucking guy. She didn't want to live that life. Like just mm-hmm. dare the fucking just push it, man. Push it. Like do something. Let's see some negative effects. When the doctor does shit, like you don't fucking do shit 
all the time that that winds up to be good. Like, let's see shit. Let's see Unitur turn on the Doctor and put the whole fucking planet wrapped around when this hardest can't land. Let's see some crazy shit. Let's see the Doctor get angry. Let's see. Let's see the companion. Let's see a fucking enemy fuck with the Doctor like personally, like just go after people he cares about, like. Like it's a goddamn race to, to the next companion to save him. Do some shit in here, man. Have the TARDIS travel to another fucking universe where the whole fucking universe is run by the fucking Daleks or some shit. Because when they went into the void, they, they wound up there or something. Like, let's go. Like, go into different universes like Inferno that time. Or, you know, like, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. How about someone's pissed off that Doctor erased himself from the fucking databanks? And they're like, well, fuck that. And they send people to kill them or some shit. Because they don't like their fucking records messed with. How about a whole race that's all about bookkeeping and shit? they just like fucking angry. They send out assassins. So. Like Medusa Cascade, the fucking Jadoon. Like, let's get some shit going on. It doesn't have to be on Earth. Let's do shit in the galaxies. Yes, I agree. Let's, let's have the Doctor go right into the fucking middle of a goddamn fucking war. Where it lasts the whole fucking season. And he has to deal with the whole... He can't even fucking leave there. That she has to, like, deal with these fucking people or else the whole fucking war in the galaxies can expand into the other galaxies. Let's do crazy shit. Like, let, let's see, you know, all the fucking experiments of Davros. Somebody decided to pick them up and fucking advance them themselves. Or some shit. Like, let's see... Let's see somebody screw with the Daleks. Let's see... Let's see, like, the Cybermen, like, at war with each other or something. Like... Jesus, let's fucking go. Let's this, this whole fucking universe of stories. So much shit. So much shit. Rose Tyler returns because fucking the doctor just wasn't the doctor. He was part of Donna Noble, was part of this, and he wasn't the doctor. He was fucking the value yard or some shit or whatever. Like, let's turns go. Out, how about this? He turns out to be evil. Yeah. He's yeah he evil. turns out to be so evil. He's fucking evil commit genocide every fucking, every fucking week. Long. Who wants to commit genocide every week? How about you do a he fucking thing? Do that everything that was going on. The same thing that affected Don Noble affected him. So he eventually turns evil. And how about you do this shit? How about you do a thing where you explain it could be nothing, but now you make it something that the Metacrisis doctor doesn't have any regeneration energy and something's going on and he needs regeneration energy. So what does he fucking do? Somehow he's got a TARDIS. He goes to every single time he fucking regenerated. And when you see the stuff going into the air, into space, he's fucking sucking up all the fucking regeneration energy in some type of thing, right? Sort of like they, they did the thing where they made the fucking thing faster. You know what I'm saying? Like, not fast. What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about Solo. Anyway, whatever. But like, it's like he's sucking up at all the energy or something. And like, like, because all the time the regeneration energy goes like there, and he's got like, why does it do that? Where's it going? You know, like, let's just let's just dare the fucking impossible. Let's like, you know, bring people back. You know, have Tika Jamaica smack her in the face and saying, you know, why did you fucking like? Why don't you visit me again? Like, what the hell? Like, let's see shit going on, man. Let's see Donna Noble being a Christmas fucking Scrooge, rich and all powerful and evil. Because the doctor erased her memories and shit. And then she has to deal with Donna Noble. Let's do shit like that. Let's do and it. There's your in, and there you go. There's your in-between episodes when the, when the uh, show's off the air. You're Let's do John with Sims' the master. The ramifications of the doctor. Let's see John Sims' master refuse to fucking regenerate. And try to do like a Capaldi. Where he don't want to be fucking Missy. And then all the shit in the universe is starting to fall apart. Because he's going to fucking alter the whole fabric of time not to become Missy. And he finds a way to fucking cure himself without regenerating. And then the whole shit goes fucking crazy. Let's do shit. Let's, 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 the, the, the amount of stories that you can fucking write, it's amazing. You could spend fucking five years trying to solve Moffat's fucking plot holes. And we just came like, up with like three or four things right, right here on the show here. Bam, you know? then out. Yeah. How about that race with Capaldi? That the guy like was like Odin and shit, and they like they mm -hmm. they are like egos, and they have to conquer everything. How about the, the doctor just pisses them off and saying, oh, "I bet you can't defeat the god the Daleks," and then they go after the Daleks, and it's like a whole fucking thing like that. Like he just decides, you know, like to trick them and shit. Like, 
Why didn't the Daleks interfere when the doctor was with Riversong for 24 years? What held them back? They wanted him to be happy. So if he was happy and they, he left them alone, what the fuck damage was done? What did they do? What did they take over? Because they weren't just sitting around. So they probably took over galaxies and shit. So let's see that. Let's see, let's see different factions of the Daleks where bring everybody back. You got Davros and the Daleks that are loyal to him. You got the Daleks from the lower depths that hate them being abandoned like that. You got the fucking Supreme mm -hmm. Dalek. You got the fucking the other Daleks, the, the cult of Scarrow. You got the fucking the, the, the fucking politician Daleks. Let's get every motherfucker together. Let's have them, like, oh, the Dalek, who the Daleks were at with themselves, because in this galaxy, they're spider Daleks. In this galaxy, it's like, like, they, like they, 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 they're so big that they fight themselves. Like, let's, let's, God, there's so many stories we could do. You know, like, what if somebody's looking for the doctor to just screw with her, like, mess with her? Like, what happens when the doctor really gets pissed off? Let's push the boundaries. Why did the alliance form? Just to put the doctor in a Pandora. Maybe we, you know, we didn't see something yet. Let's. What about River Song mentioned in the Pandora uh, Big Bang? There was another queen. Maybe when time is like altered, there's this queen that's in charge of everything that's erased. Let's see that person. There's so much, Con. I can fucking write twenty-five Ooh, here we go. You talking about the Nether Queen? They could try to fix it if they really want to fix the show. Have it set up that the Nether Queen is the Thirteenth Doctor. We already did that with the Watcher. I know, and the I know, and but it, still, it was just people are so confused by that. The Watcher and the fucking Valyar, you know. But it's like, let's really get dirty into it. Let's let's fucking let's get let's let's not get not be afraid to get dirty. Our hands dirty. Let's fucking write Doctor Who, man. I could fucking. I'm so fucking. Motivated right now. I can fucking write like 50 fucking stories right now. This is what Chibnall needs, and he doesn't have nine. it. He I just posted not. He doesn't have nine. the passion. He doesn't have the fucking passion. It's like, I need to explain this agenda in an episode of Doctor Who. Like, he's not passionate. No, you don't have to explain the agenda. There's no fucking way he's passionate about it. If he was passionate about it, he'd be fucking out there fucking promoting shit out of stuff. Like Stanley was promoting Marvel, making everything for Marvel. Uh -huh. This motherfucker would be out there talking, talking, talking. You wouldn't be able to shut him up like Moffat. Moffat was passionate about it, but he had an ego. Yeah. He had an ego, and, and, and he didn't listen. He didn't listen. Russell T. Davis was like, you know, great about it, but, you know, he just didn't, you know, I don't know. It's just, we need that passion. And I don't think Chim was passionate about it enough. I don't think so. He just do, he, it's like he's just there to take up space. That's all. It's like, it it's like when, when people are saying, oh, Chris Chibnall, you know, are you proud of this? And here it is. This is the episode. The Sanandran Conundrum. It's like you should be – when you create something, you should create something that you're fucking proud of that shit. Mm -hmm. Like George Lucas. I created fucking Star Wars. That's right. Empire Strike. Yeah, fucking damn right. In the energy. Yes. You know? Is Chibnall fucking proud of what he's creating, or is it just a job? That's it's what you've got a to question. Job. To me, it just feels like he's just... Like, I, I think it's just a job, Connor. Writer, so, uh... I think it's a job, Connor. I don't think it's, he's fucking proud of that shit. I don't think he'll put posters in this house of his shit, like of fucking um, Pating and all these other fucking different things. And, like, you know, I don't think he understands I don't think he has fucking posters in his house. You know Moffat has a fucking weeping angel in his backyard, Okay. Why does he have the weeping yeah, angel in the backyard? I, I think the thing about Moffat is that he's a bit egotistical. I, we know that. But he has a fucking yeah, weeping angel so in his backyard. Cool. In his backyard. So him having a weeping, yeah, him having a weeping angel in the backyard might not well be about the fact that he's proud of it. It might just be about the fact that he's got an eager. He said, I created that shit. Prove me wrong. No, you did. You created Weeping Angels. But what does this guy create, though? Pating? I don't even think he did. He create that. No. Um. Is he proud of anything he created this season? This I want people to like when they go to conventions. Stop asking the stupid fucking questions that 
He'll love to answer because you don't reveal shit. Just fucking ask these tough fucking questions. You know? Like there was this video game thing. Everybody was pissed about the Diablo on mobile network, right? And they're like, mm-hmm. this, is this a joke? They didn't even fucking pull their punches. Like, are you kidding? Like, and, and the fucking company might be done. Like, it's like, because they fucked up. So, like, somebody asked Chimno, like, what the hell are you thinking? Like, just flat out. What are your plans for Doctor Who? What message are you trying to convey? Don't you realize that the show is about the Doctor? The Doctor's like a fucking minor character. Mm-hmm. You know, she's throwing out lines in there, but the whole thing is Yaz, Graham, Ryan, the fucking guest stars, this, the aliens, which there ain't any aliens, and the doctor's like this little bit of small I, I thing. Don't tune in. You know, I don't tune in to see, and yes, the guest stars are great, but I tune in to see how the doctor's going to resolve a matter, not how she's going to motivate this companion to get over some sort of thing they're uh, sad about this week. Listen, I get that Yaz is her favorite companion. because She's mentioned it a million fucking times. That's great. But let's fucking make the doctor the center of fucking attention. How come all these fucking episodes, she starts throwing out lines like that, like I used to be a, uh, a gray-haired Scotsman, and I used to be a man, and not one fucking companion is like talking to her about it. Not one companion is being the most realistic companion and being concerned or, or why the doctor was a man. Or what do you mean? Nobody questions anything. That is not realistic. They're saying these are the most grounded companions. No fucking way. You would ask that shit. You wouldn't ask Connor? Uh, or how many times did she say something like being a man? A couple times already, right? And nobody fucking says anything. Yeah, she, mm-hmm. she does talk about it quite a lot. Nobody says anything, though. Do they think she's lying? Or she's know. exaggerating? Probably. I think they just... I don't think they believe she's lying. a man. I don't think she, they think she's a man. I, don't th- I think they think she's a little kooky. But, you know, that's the way she is. They don't, they, they don't think that she was a man at all. I'm surprised nobody's asking questions like, oh, how many companions ask him, ask him questions when it was a him? Oh, what's your pull planet like? Oh, what's this like? Is there any more of you? Nobody's asking anything. Because these are the same uh-huh. companions that don't put pressure on the doctor. Yeah, that's her fam. That's her friends. Because it's like, you know, the best family members that they don't ask her questions. <laughs> they, don't, they don't put pressure on her. Like, they'll do whatever she asks for. Oh, we're going to get trapped on a fucking a sand planet. And you're not even going to be mad about it. That's great. That's my fucking fam. No. Somebody should be pissed off. Like Tika Javanka, um, the Daleks just killed everybody. You know, these people killed everybody. I'm, I'm done. I'm enough. I'm out. Yeah. I will miss you, but you just fucking everybody's dead. I can't be around you. But like, nothing. They take it as them. common, just common, uh, common ground. Nothing bothers them though. Nothing bothers yeah. not one companion. Nothing. Right. That's so weird though. Don't you think, Connor? It's weird. They're yes uh, men. They're yes men companions. They they are. They are they, no, actually, I quite like them. I like them too. That's not the point. That's just it. We like them, but we like them. But we want we them to like. Them like back. We want Graham to like knock her on the show to say, "So I have to talk to you." What's the matter, Graham? Are you really mad? Like, like I want to see shit like that. Yeah. I want to fucking. What the fuck? <laughs> like why? 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 Where is it? She loves Where's Yaz. Why do you love Yaz? Why do you love Yaz? Why does she love Yaz? Right? She is, yes. The, the, the she is fucking a loves Yaz. In between them. What the hell is that? Mm. Really, right? She saw Graham first. What the fuck? She should be close with Graham. She's not. Yeah. She should be close with Graham over everybody. And she's not. His name shows up mm-hmm. right after hers, okay? That's like fucking Peter Capaldi and General Louise Coleman. Graham is supposed to be like fat, thick, right there. And no, it's not. It's Yaz. Oh, going to have tea at Yaz. I can't imagine the universe without Yaz. What the hell? Ryan's just fucking there. Ryan's like the Rory, right? 
Like, oh, Ryan goes, okay, you're going to ride a bike? All right, yeah, take care. He's, take care. She yeah, wouldn't Ryan care. looks like he's just – he's ignored. She wouldn't care if Ryan – like, he's, she was dumping them. You notice how she was dumping all of them, but then she's looking at Yaz? Yeah. Like, you want to come with me to hell with everybody else? And then Yaz is the one that said something to her, and she went right to Yaz. They were ready, like, yeah, we're done, Doc, thanks. Graham and Ryan, they were done. Done. But she's Yaz, man. She's probably going to pop the TARDIS back and go to Yaz's house and ask her to travel with her. I bet you. There's no way. I don't know. Female-centric. This is I want to know the doctor's opinion. Yes, it's basically one, another one of those shows that's uh, become female-centric. I want to know if the doctor is mad at Ryan that time when he just did his own shit. He could have been fucking killed. I want to know if she likes Ryan or Graham. I guess she does because she said the fam, but I want to know what the, how the doctor feels about shit, though. I don't get that. Like, what does she want to do compared to other doctors? You know, like Peter Capaldi's like, I made some mistakes. It's about time I fix things. What does she want to do as a doctor? We don't know. No. They don't, uh, they're not challenging her. They just we want to make it, this is a pure and simple family show, and we used everything's to get mad about accepted. Capaldi. We used to get mad about Capaldi asking, am I a good man? We're like, why are you asking that? But she's not asking anything about herself. No. Which is, the, is worse. It's everybody, dry had dry the, dry. everybody had that in them, that they questioned their, if they're doing right or wrong, right? Like you had David Tennant, Tom Lowe Victorious, but before that, there's plenty of times, right? That, that, like Matt Smith doing stuff like, you know, with the wedding room song, all these different things, right? Culp, Peter Capaldi even, right? But like, Jody Whitaker, no, we don't get any of that. We don't get any of that, like, you know, I want to know what's in her head. I want to know what's in the doctor's head. Why isn't she, th if she could think about fucking Einstein and everything else, why isn't she thinking, oh shit, Nardle is about to get his ass roasted by like a million Cybermen because I left him on that fucking thing. She didn't even question that. That's like a that's like leaving Nardo behind is like leaving Perry behind. I don't understand that. And Bill, why so did she show? Well, well, nobody really cares about Nardo, so let's. But that's uh, fucked up. That's fucked up. Lines. Do you think anything wrong with what I'm saying, Connor? Yeah, sort of. You think something's wrong with what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I'm going to continue this conversation because my nose is running. I do apologize. I got a cold. All right. We'll create a new one. All right, guys. We'll be back. Take care. Bye for now.